When do we get to check into our hotel? So you can take a nap? So I can take a nap. I'm tired. <laughs> it was uh, a week ago that we left our home in Carson City to come out here to Las Vegas and cover the 2018 SEMA show. Over the last seven days, we've been literally living off of about four hours of sleep, just banging out videos. But before we can head for home and get some rest, we need to leave on another week-long adventure called the JLX. So for those of you who actually watched our Road to SEMA and beyond, you know that we installed a few new parts on our Jeep JL Wrangler in preparation for this trip. So uh, let's take a look around and see what all we did. First off, as you can see here, we went ahead and installed the all new three and a half inch coils from Rancho along with our long travel 9000X shocks. Taking a look underneath, you can see that we installed a set of 1350 drive shafts as well. Down under here, in order to help compensate for the taller lift that we now have, we installed an Evo rear track bar relocation bracket. Down underneath the axle, you can see that we also installed some Rancho skid plates to protect our shocks and lower control arm mounts. In spite of the fact that we haven't done any damage to our tailgate as of yet, the possibility always exists. Also, we were getting a little bit of shuddering from our large and heavy spare tire, just from the tailgate warping, especially when we drive hard and fast in the desert. So to help compensate for that, we installed a brand new Evo tire carrier. And last but not least, because I know we're gonna hit our drain bolt again and again on our front differential, we went ahead and installed a Rancho glide plate. That's a little bit better. Time to pick up some essential supplies. Can't go on a trip without it. So many choices, but being that we had started off this trip with 46, I think we're gonna get a bit more. Well, we got our whiskey, so we're ready to go. Gonna head on over to Prim, which is apparently the starting point of this crazy adventure. Gonna top off one more time, just before we get ready to hit the trail. And then I'm actually gonna fill up a couple extra gas cans because I have a feeling we might need it. All right, I think we're good to go. Let's go meet up with everybody. Looks like we're right behind the Nitto truck. Wherever that guy's going, I think that's where we need to be. Some rigs. PSC Evo. Do I see Greg? No way. Is Greg here? Yeah. You gotta be kidding, GCM. <laughs> it's like a reunion of sorts. No, no, no. Allow me. Oh, Good open. morning. It's not open. Greg! Good to see you guys. <laughs> so awesome to see you. What in hey, the man. hell? Great to see you. It is great to yeah. see you. I had no idea you're going to Hey man, it. I literally just got back from Lebanon. So no Mel, way. Mel shot me a text, asked me if I could support this. So I was like, yeah, I'm in. That is hey, awesome. It's so, so good, good to, see to see you, my friend. Yeah, I was hoping I'd see you here. Oh yeah. And Cindy too. <laughs> oh man, I love you guys. Oh, so good. Man, it's been like a reunion of sorts. Yeah, I mean, all good. the people that we've been seeing. Yeah, I was following all your uh, your emails with the videos from uh, from SEMA. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so awesome to see you guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> How, How you doing? doing? Fred? How you doing, man? How you doing? Good to see you. You as well. Thanks for having us. How was SEMA for you guys? Exhausting. It's kind of fun to see all the cars, all the Jeeps leaving, all those uh, Transformer Jeeps, they're pretty cool. <laughs> some are angry Transformers, some are happy Transformers. Uh, 
I prefer to look like a Jeep, you know, but uh, it's funny to see them all heading out that way. Yeah. Like trailers and driving. Some are driving, but uh, we're going to be heading the opposite way and hitting, uh, hitting uh, probably about 100 miles of dirt today. So looking forward to that. Woohoo! That's what I want to hear. <laughs> Is that your Jeep right there, the blue one? Yes, it is. That thing looks sweet. Thanks. I'm not going to lie. I saw that gold trim on there. I thought, holy. Yeah, you know I got to eat fancy. So. <laughs> can, can we give it a look? Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Um, tell me about it. What, what do we have on here? All right, very basic. But we have the Evo Enforcer. I think it's stage two. So I got still the coil and uh, shock set up. Um, I left my ATX labs. I just dipped them in gold. and. I got the Evo uh, rack, went on pretty easy. Everything else is still basic. This is probably your basic Rubicon. I don't have all the options, but try to keep it simple this time. <laughs> is this thing like right off the lot? What's with the tag? What's hanging out of your glove box? Oh, I like leaving all that stuff on. It's kind of like having one of those new uh, hats with all the stickers on it. You know, I gotta, I gotta put a little spice to it. But it's got about 11,000 miles on it and it's been, it's been doing good. It's, I'm still happy with the fenders. I still won't change them out. These are nice, and you kind of, you guys kind of talked me into keeping things simple and not overbuilding. You know, you kind of build as you go. So I see up. you got a worn winch instead of that other thing. Oh yes, and I don't have to tape it up. <laughs> <laughs> this blue is really. I love that. Isn't that, that is that? Everybody's teasing me, saying it's purple. It's not purple. This is more of the manly blue. Yeah. <laughs> Just in touch with both sides. I watched your. Uh, your uh, YouTube uh, video of the JL Taser, so I put that in. Awesome. It helped me out with the traction control and everything else, the tires and all that, so that was great. Perfect. Well, I'm glad that you're actually watching our show oh, and yeah. actually getting some ideas from it. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the only way I could save money because I hate having to buy, explore, don't like, and then have to spend three times over. If I got somebody that's out there that's experienced and they, they know about it or they're doing the research, they're actually taking the time to explain to people, hey, I'm gonna listen. So, you know, I, I don't like spending money like that, so <laughs> I don't have it. He's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, right. Harris. I appreciate the no plug. No problem, man. No problem. <laughs> so, you guys, stay tuned. There's more to come. We just got our prototype kit on this one. So it's back full hydraulic. Can we go see it? Yes. I mean, so this is Tom. This is Tom with PSE. He's going to show us his new power steering system. Up until now, we thought that it wasn't going to be possible because of all the computers and electronics, but he says he's got a fix for it, and he's going to give us a, a look. It's really hard to see right now because the inner fender's in here. But right here where your electric pump was, yeah, that's your reservoir tank. Oh, wow. So we went and put the, the pump back on the engine. All new hoses. we got a big cooler. This is a true cool cooler here made by Dana that'll come in the kit. This has got our big heavy-duty steering gear on it, the big bore. Same what we did. And this is all prototype. It'll look a little different than the production stuff coming up. Same place, you fill it in the same place. Nice. Close up the tank down there, and that's it for the most part. This is our little breather we've got. It's actually got like a little relief valve in it. So it keeps the system pressurized about six pounds. Is that the anti-splash card? Yes. Okay, perfect. So we went ahead and put that on there. But this one's got the big heavy-duty steering gear on it. The big, like the other one. So right. We've got all those ready for the JLs. So, I guess you know how yours kind of steers. I guess it's in here somewhere. <laughs> Jump up in there and steer that. These are 40s? <laughs> Look at this, this is a asphalt, 40 inch tires. Look at this. Now that's steering. Well, congratulations, you did a great job. So obviously you're running 40 inch Nittos. Can you tell us a little bit more about all the stuff that you've got on it right now? Okay, this Jeep here, basically we started with a sport on this one, knowing we were gonna cut it up. So what we did, we we went and got the binding track axles. We got the 80 in the rear, the 60 in the front took the whole suspension out from under it. The front is a three link. We modified it for three link, put the big three inch Fox internal bypass shocks on it. Tried 
over in Fort Worth. They did all the work. They custom made the bumpers, the suspension. That's nice. On the rear, we four linked the rear. So we took the fuel tank out. So it's triangulated four link? Yep, completely. Wow. wow, that's clean. So we cut the frame and the body right here. So we got our big shocks in here. So we, got, we carry our spare tire. If you look up in there, we carry it inside there. And what we do, we made that basket on the back, it hinges. So you slide the tire in, you tie the basket down, it holds the tire in place. That's awesome. Uh, another trick part is we got 33 gallons of fuel on this one. The sway bar, we cut a, we put a tube through the fuel tank. Yeah. Sway bar goes right through the center of the fuel tank. No way. Yep, yep. The guys did a good job over there, Tribe. Real good job. Sun We're gonna get there. stickered up now. Let's see these guys do it's their job. This is uh, the behind the scenes footage that no one gets to see. Oh, it says who? So uh, Greg here, he's using his uh, precision instrument of killing to address this very technical situation of applying decals to a windshield. And there, almost killed it. <laughs> Ooh, goodie bags. Goodies. Where am I going to put all this stuff? How are you? Good, yourself. This is Dave, of course, from Synergy. Say hi to the camera. Hello, camera. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we looking at here? What you're seeing here will likely end up being probably our stage two or stage three kit. We're still kind of working the details out on it. This is our prototype high steer kit right here. So our new drag link with the prototype track bar relocation bracket, heavy duty heat treated chromoly tie rod. We got our three inch springs on there, our new snap together adjustable height bump stop kit. It's kind of cool, we haven't released that yet either. Fox, uh, two and a half inch diameter, remote reservoir shocks, we're still prototyping out. All of our adjustable control arms. And, then, and that's adjustable on the car, you don't yeah. have to take it off. Exactly, that's one, of the, that's one of the key features on all the products that we make. Any Anytime there's an adjustment anywhere, we have our double adjuster assembly, which is a neat little feature allows you to adjust the length of the control arms, track bars, tie rods, drag links without having to remove them from the, the vehicle or their mounting location. Yeah, so uh, what else do we got on here that's new? We have uh, one of the prototype Alcon brake kits that just went on there right before we came out. Moves up to a 14 inch diameter rotor if my memory serves me right. Uh, on the front calipers we had to do a little machine work to the calipers to make the the uh, wheels fit, so they're going through and figuring out their wheel offsets to be compatible with their brake kits. Sure. Any uh, rear track bar relocation or is it adjustable as well? No, we just have our adjustable track bar on there right now. So, um, But we do have a bracket coming out to move the mount up a little bit higher. What's the deal with the uh, the shock mount? So is that some kind of relo relocation yeah, bracket? Yeah, so that's a, that's a similar part that we make for the JK um, that we carried over to the JL platform and that just allows you to get you know the shock set up right. Very so cool. We got that and the, the trail ready uh, bead lock wheels with the 37 uh, inch Nitto Ridge Grappler tires. We've been putting lots of miles on those. The tire's been great, flawless. Rides good, it's pretty quiet, good traction. You know, it's a great tire for sure. Stoked on it. Awesome, I'm glad that you guys are here. Yeah, for sure. That's right, so this is Dave. He's gonna be filming this trip officially for KMC Nitto for the JLX. Say hi, Dave. Hey, how you guys doing? So tell us about your equipment. I'm, I'm super impressed. Uh, we just got the uh, red the Gemini on the DMC. Just got the red. Yeah. Just. It's our second one. <laughs> <laughs> now you're bragging. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. No. Okay. So, so it's good. This one's a lot better in low light, so it works a little bit better for trips like this. Why would we need to have something that's good in low light? because we end up uh, stuck on the trail pretty late sometimes. So. No, never. <laughs> We're just going to the mall, I thought. Doing a little trail prep. <laughs> <laughs> I've been filming on red for, I don't know, since 2008. So, oh, so a lot better. of off-road stuff and they've held up. In other words, he's saying that he's loaded and he drives a Rolls Royce at home. No, I ride in other people's cars so I can buy cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we got ourselves a driver's meet. Let's see what Mel has to say. Hey guys, well thanks for coming out. First annual jail experience. 
presented by NATO. Uh, we can do all this without NATO. So we really appreciate it. Woo! Yeah. Uh, that's been a really good team. Let me see my crew. We got Greg from Arizona. Woo! We have Harris from California. Lori all the way from Alaska. And we have Kelly from North Carolina. And Randy Myers from Texas. Yeah, so about, about five minutes we'll be ready to roll here. You heard it. We're getting ready to go. He was right. We're hitting dirt immediately, and that's what we're on. We are all on dirt now. No gunner is on the dirt. See? <laughs> and so the adventure begins. Here comes the dust, and I can't see anything. So these railroad tracks, it's kind of cool. You can see there's all these old power lines going alongside it. Maybe telegraph lines look like they're defunct now. But every now and then we pass these little drainage bridges or ports of some sort and they have dates on them. They all say 1927 or 1929. So it's a pretty old length of track. It's kind of cool that it's still in use. 1926, you can barely read it. Looks like they did some repairs to it. This is the town of Nipton. Look at that octopus thing. Oh, look at those like flowers. I don't know, I think a ride overall is pretty good. It's Rancho Springs and Shocks. They did a pretty good job of eating everything up for now anyway. So long as they don't fade, um, I'm pretty happy with them. All the other guys in our group are running Kings and Fox, high-end monotube shocks. And I mean, granted, this is day one and like the first couple hours in. Jeez, I can't see it yet. Back off. But anyway, for now, they seem like they're doing a good job. Here's one. 1925. Looks like they're getting earlier the further we go. used to be like the sheriff there or something, if I recall. I know exactly where we're at. There's the mine, I can see it on the hillside way up there. the old Ox Ranch headquarters. Back in the day, this whole area in the East Mojave Scenic Area, or National Preserve now, uh, used to be grazed by cattle, and the company that ran it was the Ox Cattle Company. It's actually a big reason why there's so many Joshua trees out here. The cows eat all the grasses, and it allowed the Joshua trees to flourish. But of course, now that this is a National Preserve, there's no more cows. Just like I thought, we're gonna be making a turn onto the old Mojave Road, and this will take us in to Laughlin or Bullhead City, wherever Mel feels like we're gonna be staying. So what can you tell me 
about the old Mojave Road. Well, at least on the length that we're at right here, this actually extends from the Colorado River, starting from Fort Mojave, and it ends up in the Barstow area. This is kind of an old immigrant trail that people used to take forever. Um, actually, and if you take it even further out, it's part of, if I recall, the old Santa Fe Trail that goes clear across uh, Nevada and all the way north into Colorado even, and then down to New Mexico. So it was a trade route for years. It became the old government road toward the late 1800s and early 20th century. But um, now it's a great four-wheel drive trail that you can take. Most people like doing it you know, in two days or so and you can camp along the way. It's a beautiful area to do it in too. So we just got a call on the radio. Sounds like um, Dave from Synergy uh, smoked a tire. So we're gonna be pulling up over here so they can change it. Pull up uh, hard to the right out of the way. Yeah, front passenger. Yeah, I have a blood gate. Oh, yeah. No spare? Wait, there's a sidewalk. Going? Uh, cool. A wheel jack. Nice. <laughs> See you next year. Is that the tire off? I got air. Off. No. Bring it on. Anybody have a better battery? Anybody <laughs> have a better battery? Do I have any more batteries? Guys. Nice. We're pulling it off. Oh, sorry. Whoa. <laughs> I'm going to say we're probably going to have to raise the Jeep a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Good? We're oh, good. cool. All right. Load them up, guys. Uh, Thank you. All right. Got to use my jack. Fortunately, not on our own Jeep, which always makes me happy. Earlier in the day, Dave from Synergy let us know that he had new Alcon brakes installed on his Jeep. So after he got his flat, they replaced his spare with one off of Mel's Jeep. Unfortunately, uh, I'm gonna guess that the calipers are a lot bigger, so they're making contact with the wheel. So they're still back there, they're gonna have to try to figure out what to do. Where are we? We're walking up to the old Fort Paiute down here. If you look at all these trees, there's a riparian that comes through here. This actually used to be the original old Mojave Road, went up to the canyon, but of course, for obvious reasons, it closed off this trail or this portion of it. So let's go take a look at the stone structure where the fort actually was.
Bold Ford Paiute from 1867 through 68, basically a year. drive down a mountainside or a hillside like this and see all the taillights under a glow of pink and orange. It's such a beautiful evening. It doesn't get much better than this. We just hit pavement and it looks like we drove about 80 miles all on dirt, mostly dirt anyway. And we're just now coming up to the Colorado River. So um, I'm not sure what hotel we'll be checking into, but I'm gonna guess somewhere in Laughlin. And um, it's nice to be back on smooth pavement. Taxi cruising along pretty quickly too on the Colorado River. I think we need to get a toast. What are we doing? Well, it's only 11 o'clock at night and we haven't been sleeping, but um, Mel has some issues with his uh, rear locker. He's had it actually for a while, but he got some wiring for it. So we're leaving the hotel. We're gonna go to his house in Bullhead City and uh, make some repairs before we hit the rocks tomorrow. So woohoo, another late night. Okay, so this is what we got. We got two of these. These are generic uh, wiring harnesses. Most of our part numbers. So they are supposed to plug right into the locker. And we should be able to bypass all the electronics on the JL. Really? So it's only two wire, plugs into the factory locker, red and black, turns the locker on yeah. without the sensors. Wow. So right now we're having an internal failure inside the, the factory or the dealer's going to warranty it, but we don't have the actual. I need lockers for tomorrow. So. It's having one locker problem, which will make none of the lockers work. So, so it's the rear locker that's not working? Yeah, that's what, that's what the code's for. So it could just be the sensor. That's what we're hoping for. Hopefully we got a rear locker. So we're gonna, we're going to we're gonna wire up to the sensor or to the pre-wired uh, switch panel and plug the front and the rear end. Should be good. Cool. So here, and then we'll ground it here. All these are positives. You know, we could be sitting in a casino gambling, <laughs> right? <laughs> don't think we're not gambling with this. Because <laughs> we honestly don't know if any of this is going to work. So when all the lights come on on the dash, do we win money? There's gambling involved. Oh, there's a lot of gambling involved. <laughs> <laughs> So we got rear rear locker and two wheel drive high or low. Actually nicer than stock. Sweet. And then uh, front lockers too. Front lockers when you put in four wheel drive. So since you have to disconnect, you couldn't feel it when you're just putting the front locker on. So pretty nice. Right on. So four low. 
Switch on, lockers. We're good to go. Man, what happened? That's pretty beard? cool. 2018 Nitto JLX Experience presented by KMC. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Took my glass. What happened to your beard, dude? I'm sipping it's all it moderately. <laughs> Well, we're, we're gonna take this tire off. We're gonna take this tire off. I'm just saying before we pull it on the ground, while we just let the air out and zap off that ring when it's nice and easy, standing upright. We're all getting old, so bending over to do things that for any amount of time <laughs> is worth doing it while it's up here. So smarter, not harder. We're gonna break the ring. I guess we're gonna change the tire completely. Yeah, we're gonna put it on a rim. There's a rim that fits a vehicle with a certain bolt pattern. Seems like a typical day in the life and times of way of life lately. Sheesh. Actually, it was a lot of fun. Good time with good friends, working on Jeeps late at night before having to wake up early in the morning and go wheeling. Man, life couldn't be better. 